Hello. In this video, I'm going to share with you the structures of some common heterocycles. A uh, heterocycle is a ring, usually aromatic, it's worth putting in parentheses there, containing atoms other than carbon and hydrogen. Common heteroatoms in, in these rings are, are oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, though there are phosphorus and, and arsenic and all kinds of, of weird things out there. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm sharing uh, these common heterocycles with you is because all of the ones that I'm going to share with you today are aromatic. Uh, and so if you are asked in the future to pick out, hey, is this thing aromatic? Uh, and it contains one of these uh, common heterocycles, then you already have an advantage because all of these things are aromatic. Later video is gonna talk about how we know these things are aromatic, but right now I'm just gonna let you know what these things are. Um, in the six-membered ring category, uh, and starting with nitrogen heterocycles, in the six-membered ring category, there's pyridine, and uh, pyrimidine, so pyrimidine has two nitrogens that appear to be meta to each other, and pyrimidine happens to be uh, one of the backbones for uh, the uh, nucleobases used in uh, DNA and RNA. Other substituents on here, some nitrogen, some oxygens, and you have thymine, uracil, uh, cytosine. In the five-membered ring world, uh, we first have a roll, and then imidazole is a something is a uh, I've remembered bring with two nitrogens in it. And both uh, pyridine over here and imidazole are compounds commonly used as bases in organic reactions. You may have actually seen and heard about these compounds before. And then there are a couple of bicyclic uh, nitrogen heterocycles that are worth sharing. Uh, one, whoa, that was weird. Yeah, you're still getting weird. There we go. One is indole, which is found in the amino acid tryptophan and things that are derived from it, like uh, serotonin. And then um, another is the the base, or is the um, whoops. It really does not want me to, to draw these things. Um, it's purine, which is uh, the foundation for other nucleobases, including adenine and guanine. Uh, and also, as you start to do things to it, uh, is the uh, underlying structure behind things like caffeine and theobromine and theophylline. Uh, so uh, you, if you see things that are based on these structures, you will automatically know that all of these things are aromatic. You just should come to that conclusion, uh, and you have a leg up on any quiz or exam where you're asked, hey, is this weird heterocycle aromatic? Yes, yes it is. Nitrogen heterocycles tend to be the most common uh, out there in the world. Uh, but I do want to show you two uh, heterocy two other heterocycles, one with oxygen uh, and one with sulfur, both based on this five-membered ring motif. Uh, because oxygen and sulfur are generally only capable of two bonds, you're not going to see oxygen in any of the six-membered rings because it can't form three bonds. Uh, not without being an ion. And so these two compounds are called uh, furan and thiophene. 
And maybe you need this before Furan uh, is something that you recognize because it's possible you uh, have heard of tetrahydrofuran as a, a common cyclic ether solvent. Well, it gets its name by being furan with four extra hydrogens on it. Um, both furan and thiophene are present in a lot of drug-like structure, drug compounds. And so again, if you see things that look like these or their derivatives or things that look like, you know, a benzene ring with a, a, a furan glommed onto it. So this is, this would be called sort of benzofuran. If you see this ring uh, system, you're like, oh, benzene's aromatic, furan's aromatic. We're probably aromatic all the way around. This concludes my short uh, sequence videos on aromatic nomenclature. In the next several videos, I will discuss how to determine if something is aromatic uh, if you're given just its structure. Thank you for watching.